T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. For decades, NASA thought that this was the future. Instead of a space capsule, a space plane, a reusable space plane, capable of carrying large amounts of cargo and personnel up to orbit, also capable of building the International Space Station, although that took a long time to develop, and capable of returning to Earth like an airplane. But in the end, it was too sophisticated, too complicated, too expensive, and in the end, way too dangerous as well. And so NASA returned to more conventional space capsules, but reusable space capsules at least, space capsules that could get the job done, at least as far as carrying personnel and small amounts of cargo into orbit, which is frankly all they needed most of these missions to do, and to do it affordably and safely. But while the commercial crew project was in progress, Process, there was one company that felt that the space shuttle was not a bad design, that a reusable space plane was the way to go. Just the way NASA did it wasn't all that good, but with modifications and by making it a lot smaller, you could get the job done affordably, safely, and much better than a capsule. But NASA turned aside from this solution called the Dream Chaser. They thought it was too dangerous, especially especially given the fact that in 2013, the thing's landing gear failed and it skidded off the runway. However, they chose Starliner, which proved to be a tremendous failure in the end. And even though Sierra Space lost the competition, they didn't give up. And now, late this year, or perhaps at the beginning of next year, depending on the status of Vulcan Centaur, a Dream Chaser spacecraft designed for cargo will re-enter the playing field, a design that's capable of carrying more cargo, bigger cargo up to the ISS, and with more flexibility than Crew Dragon or Cargo Dragon. In fact, if Dream Chaser performs as designed, this could be a better solution for getting cargo up and down to low Earth orbit, and in the future, small numbers of people up and down to orbit than even Starship. Hold on, what did I just say? Good morning and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. So a little over a year ago, I went to Denver, Colorado, or just outside of Denver, that is, and visited the Sierra Space Headquarters and their main facilities for manufacturing, testing, that sort of thing, and got an opportunity to see Dream Chaser tenacity up close and personal. If you haven't seen that tour, by the way, I strongly recommend that you check out the videos linked at the end of this one. However, in that time, I've gained many thousands of subscribers, tens of thousands actually, and some of them I've discovered in the comments. Even some of my supporters on Discord don't understand what makes Dream Chaser such a a special thing. I mean, why is it superior to so many other solutions for going to low Earth orbit? It's just another space shuttle with less cargo capacity and less thrust. I mean, come on. Why does this solution matter? And why would NASA have chosen Starliner if it was such a good solution? 
This is the vo Aha! There you are! See them? In any event, Orbital Assembly made the decision to go with Dream Chaser as the best solution for getting people off their station in large numbers and getting them all down to Earth safely. Why is that? Well, because of the way Dream Chaser returns to Earth. Instead of using a space capsule solution, which involves tremendous G-forces while passing through the atmosphere, and it also requires an ocean recovery, by the way, you can use just about any airfield across the planet in order to receive this spacecraft. That being the case, then, if you had to evacuate, say, a dozen or a couple dozen of these spacecraft from a massive space station, Dream Chaser would be the most efficient solution, because it would be very difficult indeed to try to carry out a couple dozen ocean recoveries. Because of Dream Chaser's gentle trajectory when re-entering the atmosphere, the payload and passengers are only subjected to about one and a half G's worth of stress. That is absolutely minuscule compared to the seven or eight G's that people usually experience when re-entering the atmosphere with a capsule. Any payload that Dream Chaser is bringing down, especially sensitive experiments, are going to be a lot safer and subjected to a lot less stress than you would experience on any other solution. That is one advantage that Dream Chaser has of many. In addition to that, this vehicle is 100% reusable. That actually makes it stand apart from Starliner and Crew Dragon, both of which have to expend their trunks or their service modules. By way of comparison, everything that makes Dream Chaser function, from its engines to its avionics and flight systems to its life support, everything gets reused. Now, of course, to be fair, the cargo module for Dream Chaser does not get reused. However, there are certain advantages to that that are a lot better than a trunk or a service module, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's talk about how this innovative flight system actually works. Dream Chaser can fly inside the fairing of any 5-meter rocket with an extended fairing. That being the case, then, it can fly inside Vulcan Centaur or on top of an Atlas V, or inside an Ariane 6 or a Japanese H3. As a matter of fact, this thing in crude mode could actually fly on top of a Falcon 9, but let's talk about the cargo version. As you can see here, the cargo is carried between between the Dream Chaser itself and also a cargo module known as the Shooting Star. However, it's important to note that the Shooting Star is not just a cargo module. It's actually a completely functional, free-flying spaceship on its own. As a matter of fact, the military has already contracted Sierra Space to use Shooting Star after a mission to function as a military space station. We really don't know what sort of function it's supposed to serve, that's something that remains classified. But the Shooting Star has everything that makes a spaceship a spaceship. It is, in many ways, a cargo drive unto itself. It has engines, it has solar panels, it has maneuvering thrusters, it even has the ability to fly itself. It doesn't need Dream Chaser at all. Shooting Star can carry up to four and a half metric tons worth of cargo, both internally and also in external cargo pods. These cargo pods allow Shooting Star to carry larger cargo in terms of volume than either Dragon or the Cygnus resupply ship can carry. And the Canadarm, as you can see, can remove these cargo pods and then attach them to the ISS for cargo removal. This is a very flexible system, and Dream Chaser itself can carry about a metric ton of cargo on its own. And as you can see, Shooting Star can also dispose of any sort of trash that may have accumulated on the ISS as well. 
But Shooting Star is expendable, to be fair, but nevertheless, everything that makes Dream Chaser functional, including its ability to carry personnel in the future on top of cargo, can be reused. This will allow Dream Chaser to function more affordably than any other solution currently out there. And on top of that, as you can see, Dream Chaser can dock to Sierra Space's inflatable life modules and even service satellites in the future. This is an extremely flexible ship, even in unmanned mode. Now, the manned version, scheduled to come out in 2026, has even bigger advantages, but let's talk a little bit about what makes this ship work. First of all, it's important to note that Sierra Space is building all of the engines for Dream Chaser and also Shooting Star in-house, the same way SpaceX does it. Lots of 3D printing, lots of advanced materials, and lots of advanced methods of making rocket engines more efficient. Sierra Space's series of engines are called Vortex, and they use a solution called a coaxial vortex flow field in order to get more efficient performance. The way this works is, is it allows the fuel and the oxidizer to flow together in sort of a vortex, or a swirl, so to speak, so that by the time both of them are exiting the fuel chambers, they are properly and efficiently mixed and added. Atomized. This allows them to burn much more efficiently with a lot less waste. Or at least, that's the way I understand it, and the best way to explain it to the layman, layman being myself, of course. And there are a wide variety of Vortex engines that Sierra Space is currently working on that uses liquid hydrogen, liquid methane, nitrous oxide, all kinds of different solutions in order to generate the exact amount of thrust they need for every type of application. And many of these types of engines are going to be used on Dream Chaser, both for main propulsion, maneuvering thrusters, and most importantly, the necessary thrust to perform ISS reboost. This is something that Dragon cannot do, Starliner in theory can do it, the Cygnus can do it as well, but in general, this sort, these sorts of services rather are provided by the Russians. It would be very nice to have another ship that can do this, and Dream Chaser fits the bill. And these engines, by the way, are not only for Dream Chaser and Shooting Star, they are utilized in a wide variety of applications by other customers. And in the future, Sierra Space intends to build engines large enough in order to boost Dream Chaser into orbit on its own without having to rely on other launch providers. But what about the crewed version? What sort of advantages might it have to offer? Well, they are a bit colossal. For example, Dream Chaser has the ability to carry up to seven crew members, okay, that really doesn't set it apart, but it can also carry up to four tons of cargo at the same time. In other words, it can carry out the same mission that a cargo dragon and a crew dragon can do in the same mission. That is a gigantic advantage, and it's not the only advantage that this ship has as far as carrying crew members are concerned. If you need to train transport seven crew members and perhaps some cargo at the same time from one side of the planet to the other, that can be executed by Dream Chaser in as little as three hours. This is a capability that the military is looking at very seriously. Now, yes, Starship has the ability to carry much more cargo in a short amount of time for the military. However, given the size of Starship, you need an enormous exclusion zone at the landing site. That's something that Dream Chaser doesn't require. You just need an ordinary landing field. That gives it a big advantage in a variety of different applications. If you don't need an exclusion zone that fits the largest rocket in human history, and that's going to be the case for a wide variety of cargoes and transportation services, then Dream Chaser has the edge over Starship. Now, don't get me wrong. 
wrong. Starship is indeed the vehicle of the future. No rocket is going to be able to carry a hundred tons from one part of the solar system to the other the way Starship is going to be able to. Starship is definitely going to revolutionize the future of space flight, but for certain types of missions, Dream Chaser is a better solution. But is this mini space shuttle safe? Well, yes, much, much safer than the original because it has an abort system unlike the old shuttle. If it encounters any sort of problems during the ascent, Dream Chaser is capable of climbing away from its carrier rocket and then landing at a nearby airfield in glide mode. As a matter of fact, once again, you don't need an ocean recovery system even in an emergency. Instead, the crew will simply land at an airfield and walk away from the spacecraft, something that no other transportation system has to offer. So let's quickly review all of these advantages. Dream Chaser can provide a much more comfortable descent for passengers and cargo. Dream Chaser can reboost ISS. Dream Chaser is 100% reusable. Dream Chaser carries more cargo than Cargo Dragon or the Cygnus resupply ship. Dream Chaser's cargo module can function as an independent spacecraft and an independent space station for secondary missions after the main mission is concluded. And finally, a crewed version of Dream Chaser is capable of carrying both a substantial amount of cargo and personnel up to orbit. Oh yeah, and one final thing that I'd like to say about Dream Chaser, and I like this very much, Sierra Space has raised almost all all of the money themselves. $1.4 billion worth of private investments, plus the company is producing $280 million worth of revenue right now on its own. Think about how much money Sierra Space is going to start to make once Dream Chaser actually enters into service. And I really prefer a company that can succeed on its own rather than relying on government support. But to be fair, all of these advantages are theoretical. We don't know if Tenacity is going to live up to its promise. It could end up being just as big of a disaster show as Starliner has been. But until that actually happens, we have to assume that Sierra Space will deliver on what it's promising to deliver, and it's looking very promising indeed. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, check the description for various ways to support this content, and as always, stay angry about space.